Holy crap! Welcome everybody to the Indianapolis RV Show. My name is Josh the RV Nerd, although this event will be long concluded by the time this footage rolls out, at least for this year. Behind us is a model, I've had a bunch of people ask me, hey Josh, when are you going to get that new Springdale, that rear kitchen Springdale? And I've looked at the floor plan print on this one, I gotta tell you, it doesn't do it justice. When I, when I look at just the, the layout of this on paper, something about it didn't make sense to me. And the moment I walked inside, I got it. This is one of those RVs where seeing is really believing because as soon as you walk in, you have this wide open uh, opposing slide, uh, you know, middle living rear kitchen model that doesn't have an island. And it's weird because islands are cool in certain instances, certainly, but when an RV doesn't have an island, it looks and feels absolutely enormous in this thing. And it's been a while since I really got into Springdale in depth, and I like some of the moves they've made. They have, I think, actually improved quite a bit the last couple of years. Um, they used to have this barreled ceiling, and they got rid of that. And I think a lot of people are going to look at it and say, oh, they went back to the old style. They didn't. They literally raised the roof on this thing. So the entire RV is now six foot nine tall inside, uh, as opposed to six and a half sidewall with a barreled vaulted roof. They got rid of all the carpeting and the slides, which I think is very nice. So uh, just a lot easier to keep up, easier cleaning. But they also, they, they could have made this a little bit shorter, a little smaller, a little lighter and less money. But like they stuck with, I think, some nice things like a big full true Udi network. You actually want to pack some people around it, you can. It can fold down into a bigger guest sleeper if needed. And it also means that slide had to be bigger so you have more campsite windows. And window coverage is absolutely what this RV does. Actually, what's really funny is the back end of this thing kind of reminds me a little bit of an ORV like they might make out west, although obviously it's a completely different animal. It's got some good points, and it's got some I don't think you're gonna like, and I'm gonna try to pull both of those to the forefront so that you can decide which one works best for you, and if you appreciate the candor, hit that subscribe button, like our video, let's get in there. And you know, maybe you like the layout, maybe you don't. Maybe you like the color palette, maybe you don't. There's things that people won't like about this camper, certainly. One thing that's undeniable, though, it just has ginormous wide open space. And it's due to a couple things. So first of all, you have opposing deep slides. Usually when you get opposing slides in an RV, one of them's like three foot deep and one's like a foot and a half. Because they both have a seat in them, uh, like this one over here has that uh, big full true U dinette. It's like, you know, seven foot long. Um, and then there's the theater seat uh, in the uh, the uh, a slide across from it over on the driver's side of the RV. You have deep, deep slides and it opens it right up. The other thing here is the lighter color palette makes it feel big. You've got the massive window coverage over on the camp side of the RV. So, I mean, anywhere from like the back, anywhere that you're sitting down, you know, or standing in the kitchen. You just have awesome, awesome views in this. But another thing is how they've changed what they're doing with their roofing. So Springdale for a long time had a barreled interior roof, a uh, very common to what you see in like laminated RVs, say like, you know, like a, like a Cougar, something like that, you know, a travel trailer Cougar. Well, um, Springdale was the only stick and tin that did that. But the thing is the sidewalls were still six and a half foot tall. By now going to a six foot nine sidewall with a linear interior, it's uh, they they have three extra inches of taller slide out. They have three extra inches of potential cabinet space, although you don't see that exercised in this model much because they maximize the windows. Although there are some good pantry spaces in here, there's actually two, so bear with me. But it's it's big, and it, it's also because it doesn't have an island. Islands have purposes, certainly. But no island. I mean, you could do the hokey pokey and turn yourself about in here and play a half court uh, game of basketball inside uh, a Springdale camper at this point. That's kind of crazy. Now, the one that we're looking at is 50 amp service. Uh, the bedroom is prepped and ready for a second air conditioner, but single centralized air is the standard build on this. That's pretty normal among stick and tin RVs. And I don't even know other than like all the windows where to begin. So one of the things I want to do is I mentioned that there's things in this RV that some people might like. There's things in this RV that some people might not. Um, I just took a seat over here at the theater seat. So when you're sitting down in the sofa, this is your view right here. Obviously, you've got the campsite window coverage, but the TV is off to the side. When I first saw the floor plan print on this, I wasn't sure I was going to like it. Is that a direct straight viewing entertainment? No. 
Is it really bothering me due to the, the size of the TV and the way that it angles? Also, no. But that's that's me. Everyone has different levels of tolerance. And some people are going to say, if the TV's not straight across from the theater seat, don't call me, dude. Okay, totally fair. I get it. I want to point that out. I do love the flip-flop shop down there, the shoe garage right next to the entry door. And uh, the fact that also all of these windows that we're looking at, they all open for airflow is really, really nice. Um, again, that is what I call a, a true U-dinette because there are some RVs that have only a 60-inch wide dinette and then somebody tries to shove a bench in the back of it to call it a U and it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't work. This is not that. This actually gives you more space. One thing I'm noticing, if I'm going to be critical, I don't see power outlets uh, in that dinette box area. That would be nice. However, not terribly far away over in the kitchen, you do see some outlets over there. And you're going to see a lot of the outlets in this RV are inverter prepped. Um, I'm going to teach you how to fish as we go through this video. If you see a big old yellow thing sticking on that black outlet box, that tells you that it is prepped uh, for inverter function. If you, I swear to God, I thought a tarantula just landed on my the back of my neck and it was this uh, stupid hang tag hanging off their cool air conditioning system right here that uh, it uh, about gave me a heart attack. Thankfully, I didn't squeal like a little girl on video. This time, anyway, I I'm not going to lie. It's happened before. Like, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and now I just laugh like Scooby-Doo. Um, the table free floats, by the way. So if you don't want that there, if you want to slide it around, um, you could make, you know what? Why talk about it when I can show you? We're in a video, right? You need an island? <laughs> you got an island. You can take that, and the, the legs fold down. So if you want to take it inside, outside, upside down, you could put this thing wherever. One recommendation, you see those black tabs? That's where it's going to fold down into a sleeper. While you're traveling, you do really want the table folded down in the sleeper uh, position, if at all possible. So again, that table can be there if you want it. You can move it around. It don't have to be there. You know what the back of the, I, I kept, I walked into this a minute ago, and I'm like, this reminds me of something. I've seen something like this before, and I couldn't put my finger on it because I was so stuck in the world of sticking tin campers out here in the eastern side of the country. This rear kitchen reminds me uh, a lot in concept and spirit, maybe different execution, but concept and spirit with some stuff that ORV does out west from Oregon. They do a lot of these mega window rear kitchen situations like this, and I think they look, I'm a sucker for them. Um, I, the, the other thing that I really like about this is like, you've got that big stainless farm sink. It's very easy to use. You've got good prep space. Um, I could see some folks not liking the microwave mounted down low. Okay. That's fair. I totally get that, but there's not overhead cabinetry to mount it because they maximize windows. So it's, it's a give and a take. It's not going to be for everybody. Here's an idea I have. I'd love to see what you think about this under the counter right here. I think when they first made the first version of this, there was a little mini fridge down there that they ended up taking out. And I don't think there's anything under that countertop. What I would love is if you had one of those drop-in wastebasket little removable countertop pot, uh, things, and then you could pull the wastebasket out of the camper from the outside via an exterior baggage door that is not currently there. What do you think of that idea? Because I think it's a good one. Now, to be fair, under the sink, you will see when we go through and open everything up for storage mode, there's actually some like a big space for wastebasket, big pots and pans, all that stuff down there. Now, I'm wondering, because here's a thought. You have your stovetop, but because of the window, there's no opportunity for a stovetop uh, exhaust vent hood. So directly above the stove and the oven, you have that small little four inch fan to kind of act like a little bit of a heat and smell exhauster, uh, as it were. Speaking of exhausters, I think that's what how my wife refers to me most of the time. Um, by the way, here's a fun way to introduce your spouse. Uh, you know, if you're at like a dinner party, you'd be like, hey, my name's Ted. This is my ex-girlfriend, Mary. Because it is technically true. It's, um, I just don't know that everyone appreciates it. <laughs> <laughs> I, for one, think it's funny. So by default, over here would be a jackknife sofa. You can option the theater seat. Now, somebody at this uh, RV show event yesterday said, what about a hide bed We would really like a hide bed It's not a normal option. If you grab the build list check sheet, you won't find hide bed as an available option on this camper. 
Here's the thing though, Springdale does use hide-a-beds in their factory. So it's not that it's going to be necessarily impossible for them to get one or put it in this. It's just going to have to be a special request. So standing here right now, I can't guarantee that it's possible. I can tell you that there's an exceptionally high likelihood that something like that could be done if desired. But look at this, man. When you're standing in the kitchen, like so often the person in the kitchen gets left out of the camper. I think the person in the kitchen has the best view in this RV. I think it's kind of crazy. Now our entry door has a frosty glass window. Uh, so it lets light in, but you maintain privacy, but you can't open or close the, the window shade in it. But if somebody's knocking on the door, I got a window right here where I can check if it's, you know, Bob or Mary or Ted or Alice or whoever it happens to be. Does anybody pick up that movie reference, by the way? That is a, uh, that's getting to be an older one now, isn't it? Um, let's, uh, let's start taking a look, I think, at all the storage. Um, again, though, one of the nice things here is you do have a big TV that you can see from anywhere in the rig. But moving on from that, you got a, 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 what would you use that cabinet for under the television? Now, the full u dinette does have storage. The rear bench, you will have to take the cushions off to get to it. So I, I wouldn't keep your everyday coffee pot stuff in there. You've got um, black pleated shades through the entire RV to kind of blot sun out when you want it. They don't offer roller shades in this. That's one of those things if... You know, you could go to Menards if you wanted to change those out. It's not impossible to change window treatments after the fact. It's just that this factory only uses what this factory uses. Um, there is also a surprising amount of storage here. Because when you look at the kitchen, you, you see all the windows. And what you don't see is a lot of storage as a result. But the thing is, what you got to remember is uh, you, you have a big pantry built into the slide right next to that 12-volt uh, compressor fridge. But also easily missed in, I guess it's not technically a hallway, but kind of the hallway heading to the bathroom from the living room, there's actually a second pantry there, or it could be a closet, or it could be whatever. So there is a lot of good storage in here. It's just not all as obvious as maybe, uh, you know, you, you could have, you've seen things before um, in the past. Apparently we got some Mr. Wizard science stuff going on. Anybody remember Mr. Wizard? Wasn't that Patrick Stewart? Wasn't he Mr. Wizard? Something like that? I don't know. Anyway, um, this is a walk-through bathroom, and it provides a couple benefits and a couple drawbacks. Again, I like to try to be as fair as possible presenting all the different info in my videos. While I'm kind of yakking about that, take a look at the storage here that's in the bathroom because it's actually pretty good. Uh, the A walk-through bathroom keeps the entire RV shorter, lighter, less expensive, and it actually provides a larger square foot of um, floor space for a big bathroom. The downside to a walk-through bathroom is that if someone's using the bathroom, they've cut the camper off. You can't go front to back to pass forward, and this RV doesn't have a second door, so there's not a, a way around that. It does have some awesome space around that toilet, however, which is something that I certainly appreciate. And I do kind of like, I'm going to back up a little bit here, if you're, uh, there's a lot of RVs where when you're like sitting in the living room, you're just like staring at a toilet. And don't get me wrong with that bathroom door open. Can I see the side of the toilet? Yes. But it's, it's certainly not as like obvious and intrusive. It doesn't look like you're just staring at the can, man. You know what I mean? Um, the, uh, the new taller ceiling height in this is something that I really like. Um, because as opposed to the old six and a half foot sidewall that they used to have, the new six foot nine sidewall means three extra inches of room above me. So with shoes and hat and a bad balding hair day, I can still stand in that shower. No problem. Just to get our way, uh, down here, part of my footprints in the shower. Uh, you can see that it, it is more the rectangular style versus a, a radius kind of shower. You know what I'm not seeing in this bathroom whatsoever I am not seeing any sort of Octopus Fight Club uh, towel hanger, coat hangers, you know. You could maybe mount a couple right here or on the opposing wall behind us. Would probably be the best spot above the toilet. But currently, there is nothing there. Um, up here in the bedroom, this is another case of good news, bad news. Uh, you've got the vent above the bed all the time. With the 50-amp service, you see that power junction box, you could... Uh, apply a second air conditioner. I'm pretty sure they actually offer that from the factory, but that's something that we can apply here at our stores uh, as well. What do you think about the the shelf over the bed? You know, I'm, I prefer cabinets over the bed myself. I guess I'll go first. But usually a manufacturer won't put that partition up there. It just goes all the way up to the, the front wall panel of the RV. 
at least it looks done with intent. And I think at least it looks visibly pretty. Now, to, to help you understand here, there is, um, ooh, there's a good, like, two, two and a half inch lip right there. Or, like, that's that's about five inches, you ask both guys. Um, that uh, you could put some wicker baskets or something in there to help keep storage in place. Now, if I slide around the corner, one thing I do want to mention is up here in this area, uh, that you do have TV hookups up there. Um, the, the wall across from the bed is a sliding pocket bedroom privacy door, so you can't really mount TVs there. Um, if you are a side sleeper or claustrophobic, you may really like the bedside stands that they have going on here. Um, the opposite side has a little laundry hamper. We're going to see that in a minute. Again, good news, bad news. Good news. There's room for a 60 by 80 true queen. Bad news. The factory does not give us a 60 by 80 true queen. They give us the shorty McShort pants bed goblin union bed where uh, Ted, Ned, and Fred under the bed can reach up and tickle your toes at night, which is not everyone's favorite. I did sit up on that bed. I, I did not cold cock myself on that overhead shelf because, man, when you look at it in person, it looks rather uh, bossy. I'm not saying that I would just abandon all caution, ye who enter, especially if you put a bigger, thicker mattress on there versus the uh, the typical RV factory backbreaker death wafer mattress that a lot of these things have. But, um, you know, provided you're not trying to do jumping jacks in bed, you, you should be all right there. Now, I mentioned um, some bedroom storage here. Starting over here, I got kind of the, the bed sheets uh, in front of it. Keystone has been doing this for years. I think it's a very underrated feature. You have a place to throw yesterday's clothes now that it's today. And if you notice your opposing hanging wardrobe slides, those things, um, they actually are either dresser space or uh, hanging closet, whatever you need. Now, something that's very interesting, that, that big storage cabinet that we saw in the bathroom, that big linen cabinet, that can double as extra bedroom storage. Because uh, you notice that same cabinet has access doors on both sides, so you can kind of decide to use it however you want to. Um, I'm kind of curious what people think about pass-through storage like that. Like, I like that I have the opportunity to use it a couple different ways. I don't know necessarily how useful it is in that way, but at the same time, at least I have the options. Now, I've never closed the slides on this one, but considering this RV has no islands, I got to believe, no islands, plural, a double island camper. God, don't give, don't give the RV industry ideas. They'll try it. I got to believe that we're going to have some good travel access here. Let's find out. So I did my best to stay standing at the exact same position. Something I didn't think about, because it's so uncommon, is how these are opposing super deep slides. But that being said, there is still a little carefully step toe tap way that you can snake your way with a sideways travel trailer two step back here. You can get to the refrigerator. You can slide through here. You can get to the sink. You can get to the bathroom. You can get to the bedroom. You really shouldn't occupy something like the dinette slide while it's retracted because the inside edge of that slide is not properly supported the way that it should be. But the fact is, you can, generally speaking, get to your, your, your refrigerator, bathroom, bedroom, what I call the big three for travel access without ever touching a slide button. And just in case anyone's curious, these are um, 12 volt rack and pinion slide systems. Sometimes people like to know that. So as we step outside, first things first, let's talk towing. Taking another look at the weights and the measures there. Um, uh, I, I think a lot of people are going to ask the question, you know, is this half ton towable? And if this little towing talk kind of segments are useful for you, I don't know, click the like button on the video. Um, my answer to that is going to be, it, it depends. If you have a really heavy half ton uh, tow package and you're going to be going through modest terrain and, and I would say over not long distances, I could see this thing working, but if you're going to go for long distances, you want to go across windy zones, you want to go up and down mountains, I, I wouldn't do it with a half ton myself. I would stay to a three quarter, even though the half ton is maybe, uh, if properly equipped, mathematically capable. It's not the experience I would like to have. You're going to be working that sucker at both ends for sure. Um, <clears throat> up front here, behind the propane tanks, of course, room for a couple batteries, uh, and additionally, like all your keystones, you have that big black box right there. That's called the Giggy Box. Um, what that thing is is a battery disconnect on steroids. Um, it will 
totally cut 100% of all parasitic load in the RV and it gets rid of that ugly bank of cheap wiring relays up front that a lot of RVs frankly still have. It is a really cool handy feature. A um, couple other neat little things that like you find all the way through their, uh, the, the phrase is kind of golden threads, like you find them through most of Keystone, like through their entire family uh, of RVs. The, the magnet holdbacks here also have the little like auto magnet latching pin, basically, where if you watch this real close, it actually slot locks itself in there. <laughs> it's popping and locking like a hip hop dancer, basically, so that you don't have to fight this. And they give us a nice big full pass through on both sides of the RV. Uh, this right here, this is a very, um, I think, underappreciated feature for someone who's maybe a first timer sliding over to the other side giving you a look up in here um they have improved their base factory solar package from last year it used to be a 15 amp controller and 200 watts of solar up on the roof it's now 220 watts of solar on the roof and now a 30 amp controller but notice here even at the most basic solar package that keystone offers it's still a uh, victron mppt charge controller they are using nice hardware in the big empty black box that's inverter prep. Now, this isn't going to be the kind of like, oh, you plug in an inverter and run the air conditioner off the batteries. It's, it's none of that kind of stuff. This is a far more basic camper than things like that. That kind of equipment is several thousands of dollars. It's not that you couldn't do it to this trailer. It's just not the factory's intention to build it that way. It would be a DIY project. It would be able to run a couple outlets in the RV. I think like six or seven different outlets um, off battery power. But understand you'll deplete your batteries more quickly doing that. You have the 42,000 BTU tankless on-demand water heater. And if you notice, this is located up pretty close to the shower. So your shower should get hot water very quickly. If you notice, though, it is very far away from the kitchen. So you, uh, you know, if you, it, it is on-demand. It will heat the water right away. But the trick is all the cold water that's already existing in the lines on the way back to the kitchen, all of that has to get flushed out. So that's the thing that you need to kind of consider. But that's true of like any type of water heater, really, even at your house, you know. Um, hot, cold outside utility shower right above the sewer hookups. And if we get down here, something that uh, Springdale was one of the first stick and tin trailers to enclose their bellies and forced air heat them standard. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that's the Four Seasons Arctic package. Like, I don't I don't believe that. Uh, but for good extended season camping, like if it's gonna dip down below freezing today and then it's gonna come back up above freezing tomorrow, this camper would be fine. You know, it's, it's not made for these serious hard tundra frozen temperatures. This is, this is more of a um, Larry Lunch Bucket and Jane Six Pack kind of camper for people that still punch a clock for a living, or for folks that just don't need to spend their kids' inheritance on an RV. Jumping back to the other side again, um, that black box right there on the right, that is your prep for a tire pressure uh, monitoring system. Um, so basically it'd be, it, it's essentially plug and play and then you can monitor it off your phone. The little doodads and widgets will talk to your phone uh, as you're heading down the road if need be. Um, I try to share good with bad. If I'm being super fair here and if I'm looking for trouble with the map and glasses, the awning space on this is a little bit limited. Because we do have that door side slide eating into potential awning space and because it's not big enough to like mount an awning on the face of that slide, it just kind of is one of those things. This RV focuses more on interior living space over exterior living space. It's, a, it's an exchange, you know. Uh, power stabilizers on these, by the way. Everything's just push button, simple and easy in that regard. Um, and I'm going to give them credit. I'm not a super fan of outside speakers, but the fact is they didn't mount them all the way up against the roof. They're right down here about campground level. Now, theoretically, you're not getting the benefit of left-right speaker action, but this is not the kind of RV where you're going to enjoy an immersive surround sound experience outside of your camp or anything like that. So, I don't know. It, doesn't, it, it really doesn't offend me that much. I did notice those set of household outlets to the right of those speakers. Those are inverter prep. That's kind of a cool thing. And notice how the windows all the way around the slide are tinted and they're opening for airflow. Let me slide you around here. 
that is kind of a nice little touch that a lot of campers in this class still are not doing. So extra little details like that make a big difference, I think. Now, uh, if you look in the upper left corner, you can see where she is prepped and ready for one of those telescopic removable ladders to get you up to that fully walkable roof. Um, it doesn't actually include the ladder from the factory, but that's stuff that we can assist you with. And if you look up top just above that slide, let me see if I can maybe zoom you in here a little bit. Hey, look at that. We can do that. That is your 220 watt solar panel right there. And with that 30 amp controller, I think you'd be able to daisy chain a second one of those onto it if you're so inclined. So, let me know what you think of it. I think, like I said, I think that there's some really good qualities here. I think there's some things that some people are not going to like. But overall, I think it's something different. And that's something that I enjoy about it because I see the same thing all day every day. Anytime I get a chance to see something a little bit different, it always kind of rises to the top for me very quickly. Uh, you can check the links in the video description for pricing and availability. You can see any of our Springdale carrying stores where we have one and what they're running. And short of that, until next time, keep these requests coming because your input is the reason we got this video today. You continue to drive this channel, not me. So take care, stay safe, have fun. And happy camping, everyone. I was going to take my hat off, but I'm balding with a really bad hair day. If you can believe that, that's happening. So, yeah. <laughs>